the game of basketball that's been around before any of us have been born. Technology has changed the game we love. Cameras have changed the game. Social media has changed the game. The game has seen plenty of all-stars and offensive and defensive innovators that were impossible to stop in the league. Due to the dominance by some of the league's greatest players, the NBA had no choice but to make rule changes that would help the game in the present and future. Keep watching to find out 10 players who forced the NBA to make rule changes. Leroy Edwards Leroy Edwards is generally recognized as the player responsible for the implementation of the three-second rule. This rule started in 1936, as it was originally designed to limit rough play near the basket. The rule limits the time players can remain in the area in front of the basket known as the paint or free throw lane. The rule has been modified and is still used today. Edwards played professional basketball after playing college ball in Kentucky and became the premier player in the country. In 1936, he signed his first pro contract with the Oshkosh All-Stars, a team in Wisconsin that played in the National Basketball League. This league was forerunner to the NBA. He played for them 36 to 49. He was a prolific scorer with either hand, left or right, could shoot from the outside, and was an excellent defensive player. He accomplished so much at a time when game scores and point totals were much lower than today. In those days, the actual playing time was shorter. The game had 15 to 17 minute halves and no 24 second shot clock. Play was slower and teams would play zone defense and hold on to the ball for long periods of time, making it very difficult for a player to score many points in a game. In comparison, today, NBA games consist of four 12-minute quarters and each team takes over 75 shots per game. The three-second rule was a great decision. George Mikan Mikan became so dominant that the NBA had to change its rules of play in order to reduce his influence, such as a widening the lane from 6 to 12 foot, the Mike and Roll. Mr. Basketball also played a role in, in the introduction of the shot clock. Mm -hmm. And in the NCAA, his dominating play around the basket led to the outlawing of defensive goaltending. Mikan was a harbinger of the NBA's future which would be dominated by tall, powerful players. As an official, Mikan is also directly responsible for the ABA three-point line, which was later adopted by the NBA, the existence of the Minnesota Timberwolves, and the multicolored ABA ball, which still lives on as the money ball in the NBA All-Star three-point contest. In 1956, Mikan was one of the candidates for the U.S. State Congress in Minnesota. In 1967, Mikan returned to professional basketball, becoming the first commissioner of the American Basketball Association, a rival league to the NBA. In order to lure basketball fans to his league, Mikan invented the league's characteristic red, white, and blue ABA ball, while also instituted the three-point line. Mikan resigned from the ABA in 1969, but made changes that will last in the NBA forever. Wilt Chamberlain. Wilt Chamberlain was arguably the greatest player to ever play in the NBA. He holds records beyond belief with the biggest one where he scored 100 points in a single game. Wilt was so good that the NBA had to implement four different rule changes to the game. Firstly, dunking free throws was banned. This 1956 rule was needed because Chamberlain was able to jump from behind the free throw line and slam the ball through the basket before his feet touched the ground. Since the ball went through the hoop before Chamberlain touched any part of the lane area, it wasn't a lane violation. The new rule states players cannot cross the plane of the free throw line even if your feet are not touching the ground until the ball hits the rim or passes through the basket. The second rule followed where there would be no more inbounding the ball from the baseline by lobbing it over the top of the backboard to a teammate on the other side. Players at the University of Kansas were throwing alley-oop passes over the top of the backboard from behind it for Chamberlain to catch it in front and dunk. In 1956, this became a rules violation. Offensive goaltending was banned. Defensive goaltending had already been illegal since 1944, thanks to George Mikan. They instituted a new rule in 1956 to prevent Chamberlain and others from guiding their teammates' shots into the hoop on offense. The new rule said that no player can touch the ball if any part of it is over the cylinder. These days, it's commonly called basket interference. In 1951, the NBA widening the lane from 6 foot to 12 foot to try and diminish the dominance of George Mikan. So in 1964, they decided that it was not wide enough to stop Wilt Chamberlain. The lane area was expanded from 12 feet to 16 feet. Derek Harper Derek Harper and Michael Jordan were the reasons why hand-checking is now legal in the NBA. 
The rule change says that, quote, a defender may not place and keep his hand on an opponent unless he is in the area near the basket with his back to the basket. A defender may momentarily touch any opponent with his hand anywhere on the court as long as it does not affect the opponent's movement. From its inception by Dr. James Naismith to the beginning of 1990s, the game of basketball was properly referred to as a big man's game. The sports record books, greatest dynasties, and top players tended to be athletes who towered over the sport. However, the 90s had two earth-moving events that changed the prehistoric era. First was the Chicago Bulls dynasty, led by the two wing players in Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. That brought the idea of the big man's importance to question, but it didn't exactly kill it. Right after the dynasty ended, the league became the walking ground for the Tim Duncan, San Antonio Spurs, and Shaquille O'Neal's Los Angeles Lakers. The NBA landscape changed in 2004 when the game completely wiped its hands of hand checking. This had been a form of defense primarily used on ball handlers to control their movements on the court and suppress their speed. The hand check had been on its way out since the role was modified in 94, but the tactic was killed in order to give way to a faster game and more freedom to guards. And boy, did the guards take advantage. Every major sport goes through phases and rule changes. With a hand check penalty, we might see the same results as with the restrictions placed on the NFL defenses after the 1977 season. The hand check, as well as the legalization of zone defense at the dawn of the 2000s, changed the NBA forever. We may be seeing the continuation of the NBA offenses setting record-breaking numbers and players putting up marks not to be reached until the next generation. Charles Barkley Barkley was an undersized power forward who was also extremely pesky, crafty, and dominant during his prime, practically single-handedly leading the Phoenix Suns to contention despite never being able to lead them to a championship. Barkley would actually use his butt to post defenders for as long as 20 seconds before actually shooting the ball. So in response to that, the league stated that no player below the free throw line could actually do this for longer than five seconds. The fans want to watch an exciting game. They want entertainment and the NBA wasn't giving the fans what they wanted with a 20 second post up. You can't blame the NBA here. Shaquille O'Neal. It's hard for some of the big men in the league to shoot their free throws. So when teams were losing and needed a couple more possessions to get back in the game, teams would foul bad free throw shooters, send them to the line, have the player miss their foul shots and continue coming back and grinding back into the game. The NBA had seen enough of this and finally made a rule change that would only allow fouling these big men at certain times. The NBA approved rule changes on fouls away from the ball would reduce intentional fouling. Before this rule change, if a foul occurred away from play in the last two minutes of the fourth quarter or overtime, it resulted in one free throw in possession of the ball. That rule has been extended to apply to the last two minutes of all quarters. Intentionally fouling poor free throw shooters has become a frequent strategy of a game and often criticized one at that. In the rule tweak, limited the opponents for teams that employed that ploy. Frequently used against former Lakers center Shaquille O'Neal, the strategy went on to be known as Hack-A-Shack. Derrick Rose Back in 2011, the NBA's collective bargaining agreement included a rule named after Derrick Rose. The rule would allow a player finishing his rookie contract to make 30% of a team's salary cap, which is up from 25%, only if he's twice been voted All-NBA or won an MVP award. It was also named after Rose because he was the NBA MVP in 2010-2011, a rule that would reward players who exceeded their value while on their rookie deals. LeBron James LeBron James helped implement a Supermax contract rule. This rule would give teams a much greater advantage when looking to re-sign superstars back to their team. It's actually known as the Designated Veteran Player Extension. This rule allows teams to re-sign qualified players to a maximum five-year contracts worth up to 35% of the salary cap with 8% escalation in each subsequent year. The length of the Supermax deal depends on the player's years of NBA experience and years remaining on his current contract. Furthermore, teams cannot trade a Supermax player for their first year after he signs a contract. Of course, James signed with the Lakers in a four-year deal worth $152 million instead of taking the five-year Supermax offer from the Cavs. Allen Iverson on October 17, 2005, Commissioner David Stern made the NBA the first major sports league to have a dress code. This dress code required baggy pants and jersey wearers like Allen Iverson and Carmelo Anthony to wear business casual attire to games and sports coats with dress shoes on the bench. Some might not agree with Stern's stance, but just like restaurants and events, the association wanted to look professional. 
It was a fair decision. Players were still able to dress how they liked before the game coming into the stadium. In today's game, business casual attire has completely shifted after a full decade has passed. Fashion and style has expanded beyond just sports coats and dress shoes, but as long as players are looking presentable, the NBA will be happy with this rule.